This video is sponsored by my all-time favorite Japanese snack box, Baksu. I asked you guys over on my Instagram to tell me some unpopular opinions you have about gaming. A lot of these unpopular opinions have to do with things like Stardew Valley, Animal Crossing, The Sims, just like cozy gaming in general. Because you know, that's just like our little corner of the internet. I love it. And you guys definitely brought some interesting things to the table. But before we get into it, I would love to tell you all about today's sponsor, Baksu. Now you guys know that I am a snack girl, and I love to snack. In my opinion, Boxu is the best Japanese snack box out there. Boxu delivers Japanese snacks, candies, and teas to your doorstep every month. This month's theme is Sakura in Kyoto, and this is hands down the best box that I've ever gotten from Boxu. It's like it was perfectly tailored for me. First of all, I love cherry blossoms, huge fan. Cherry blossoms and matcha and all sorts of sweetness and saltiness, like it, it's just perfect. I love that they do a new theme for the boxes each month. And then for February and March, both new and existing subscribers receive the very limited edition cherry blossom box that I have here. It just has everything. Boxu works with local businesses in Japan to feature snacks from many different regions. Something that I also appreciate about Boxu is this book. It not only gives you information on the snacks in the box, but where they come from, who made them, any sort of cultural significance that would be neat to know about. Boxu also has this thing called Boxu Boutique where you can reorder your favorite snacks from past boxes, as well as adorable curated gifts. It is my genuine wish for everybody to try the white chocolate infused strawberry that Boxu makes. It's so good that I literally dream about it. <laughs> Boxu is great for anybody who is interested in Japanese snacks. Make sure to use my code LIST15 at checkout to get $15 off of your very first Boxu. Okay, now let's jump back in. I love farming sims as much as anyone else, but they get so boring. Most farming sims have this formula that's like really super harvest moon. Obviously you have farming, and then of course there is like romance element. My favorite thing about farming games, especially since I played Stardew Valley for the first time, which by the way, when I first played Stardew Valley, I seriously was like, this is such a Harvest Moon ripoff. Like I can't even believe that they got away with this. And then I found out that it actually is like a total Harvest Moon ripoff because the guy that made it is like, you know, was trying to kind of just make a little farming game just like Harvest Moon. But then obviously my opinion on that changed because once I started really playing the game, I was like, oh my God, this is everything that I want from like a harvest moon now. I think Stardew Valley is the benchmark at this point. I love when farming sims introduce like a new element into the mix. So like the RPG dungeon crawler. I love what Coral Island was doing with the story and the magic and everything, but also like Coral Island introduced diving. And so I think that you can make a farming sim and make it super unique without following this formula so strictly that people get bored. And then this one is kind of related. I love cozy games, but majority of the games are almost the same like in formula or font. Yes. Yes, that is kind of something that I noticed, but also the thing about cozy games, which somebody explained this in a video and I was like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. Um, any game can be cozy as long as you are the one that's being cozy. So like a lot of people will say that like Breath of the Wild is their cozy game, which I'm like, okay, that I guess I can kind of see that. But when we're talking about specifically like genre, I think a lot of it has to do with just like how cute the game is. I don't know, I don't really fully understand the term yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna be so honest there. I guess like any game could be cozy, but you know, a lot of like the life sim games and the farming sim games fall under that umbrella. And so I get why people would be like, oh, I'm not really like, this is all the same. And it's like, you're just playing a life sim, you know? I think that's just what they are. I agree with Nintendo, no longer updating Animal Crossing New Horizons. Games are meant to be improved, not perfect. Yeah, I think with Animal Crossing New Horizons, I'm done. Like, that's it. That's all I wanted to see from the game. People discredit Animal Crossing New Horizons a lot because when we played it on launch, obviously we didn't have a lot of the content that we have now. After the 2.0 update, I am really satisfied with the game. I don't feel like I need anything else out of it. My opinion is that it should have been like that on launch, but I guess it was cool that it was a little bit more spaced out, I guess. So yeah, I would, I would totally agree um, that Animal Crossing New Horizons this is what the game is. It obviously innovated the title like so much because Animal Crossing New Horizons is so different than the other mainline games with how you um, 
how you play. Okay, like a furniture outside terraforming, like it genuinely did so much to change Animal Crossing and I'm excited to see what they do with the next game. Animal Crossing videos are boring by now. I wish creators would make videos of New Leaf TBH. I think there's tons of creators that are making the more like retro content. Oh God, New Leaf is not retro, is it? Oh my God, no. But like, okay, this is a New Leaf. I actually don't know if she does New Leaf, but Kay Daisy does like the GameCube saves where she'll buy GameCube storage cartridges, Animal Crossing cartridges and see what's on them. And I genuinely think like that's the coolest idea ever. It's out there. It's definitely out there, but you have to go and find it because there are so many people that are still into Animal Crossing New Horizons. For me, I kind of got to take a little bit of a breather. I just don't want to like decorate a whole island and that's kind of what I do mostly on my channel. So I've thought about playing the older games because I want to do like an in retrospect type of thing. And it's been a really long time since I played New Leaf and I never ever even played the first Animal Crossing game. That's the only Animal Crossing game I haven't played because I have played Amiibo Festival now. I own it. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about that. Here's another Animal Crossing one. I will always love New Horizons, but I just wish I saw more indie gaming content, Night in the Woods, etc. Like I said, you guys, it's out there. I promise it's totally out there. One of my major goals for this next year is to play two games that are new to me each month, excluding the month that Tears of the Kingdom comes out. I am totally preoccupied. That's all I'm doing. So I, it'll just be one game and probably when Pikmin 4 comes out. But I think it's really cool to see other creators branch out and play other games or introduce other hobbies to their channel. Because for the most part, when I start watching somebody and I am subscribing to somebody, it's because I like them and I just want to see them succeed and I want to see everything that they're interested in. And not everybody is interested in indie games. Sims 4 is hard for me to get into. The controls are difficult. Yes, yes, I am a lifetime simmer, okay? I've been playing Sims since my whole life. And something that is so interesting to me, when The Sims pays like huge, huge, thousands of viewers, streamers to play The Sims, it always goes exactly like this. They spend one hour in cast, create a Sim. They spend an hour creating their Sim and then they spend another hour trying to figure out what to do. They'll like do the basic things like move into the starter home and get a job and then, I don't know, maybe go try to like bang people. Genuinely, it's, it's so interesting to see because it's like, I didn't realize that Sims had such a barrier to entry. They have tried to implement features here to like, make it easier to create your sim and just kind of get started playing and sort of this little like walkthrough. I think that that's really helpful, but something that I think hinders The Sims 4 a little bit is a lack of like a story within The Sims themselves. So I look at games like The Sims 2 where it's like you pop in and you go into like the Lothario Caliente house and there's drama. There is drama, honey. There's a whole story. You can go into the tab and see like The Sims memories and see everything that's happened to them. And with The Sims 4, I think that we're really lacking something like that. I talked about this a little bit on my second channel, but when The Sims said that The Sims 5, the upcoming game, is not gonna be an MMO, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little disappointed. I look at games like GTA 5, so like GTA roleplay, no pixel, and I'm like, dude, The Sims would be perfect for that. Like imagine creating a Sim and then being able to like plop it into a server. I would love love to be able to do that. So when they said that it's not gonna be an MMO experience, I was like, mm, okay, that's interesting, but I'm really hoping, and I think that they mentioned something about this, being able to like create a server and play The Sims with your friends. If we could have like some sort of like GTA roleplay style streams for The Sims 5, that would be so freaking cool. And I think it would be so much easier for a lot of people to get into. Let me know, if you're not a simmer, like what, what is there something stopping you? Cause I'm so curious about that because for me it comes natural cause it, it's like been a game that I've played forever. Similar to how I feel about Stardew Valley. I'm like, it's a little hard to get into if you didn't play like the Harvest Moons growing up. But if you did, you're gonna pick up Stardew Valley and know what to do immediately. You know what I mean? Here's another Sims 4. Alpha CC is very cute. I used to be an Alpha CC simmer. Okay, all of my Sims were like BBL, Kardashian, Face Tunify. They were all sexy alpha Sims. They all looked so good. All of my Sims, my Sim would be like cooking in the kitchen and it's like, she looks like she's ready for the club. I used to be an alpha CC Simmer and I switched to Maxis Match, even though I don't really think the Maxis style is like that 
cute to me. Max's Match CC is like crazy good, crazy good. And it's genuinely so much less stressful to me because I don't feel the need to like make all my sims match. The worst thing in the world to me is when you have an alpha CC IMVU looking sim and then you go and you take her to like a bar or like a public lot and she literally looks like she's from a different game. That's just how I feel, okay? I like the Maxis match because it actually like matches really good and it takes the stress out of that scenario for me. I was a non-believer, but I am a believer now. Developers taking inspiration from other games shouldn't get as much shit as they seem to. So infuriating to me when I was on Twitter. I need to get off of there because I just get mad every day. There was a time when Coral Island came out when people were like, this is a Stardew Valley ripoff. First of all, Stardew Valley is a ripoff of another game. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's a genre. It is a genre. You are allowed to make a game within a genre. And I think it's so frustrating to see like everything be compared to like Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley when it's like, it can be its own thing. But this game that was in the direct, people were saying, like oh it's like another animal crossing and it's like yes that's true but it's also just like a life sim game so i don't know i think that as long as you're making a game and doing everything in good faith like not stealing assets not stealing art like you know what i mean like uh, characters premise like it, you can make a farming game and it's not a stardew ripoff i promise i hate how hypercritical folks have become about games that simply aren't their cup of tea i noticed this okay my favorite thing i tweeted about this the day after the direct is so funny the nintendo direct because there's always going to be like these podcasts or people are going to start putting their think pieces out and then i get to go and read them about the nintendo direct and more often than not i see so many people shitting on here's an example the the um dress up game that was in the nintendo direct like okay let the girls have their thing if it's not your thing i don't feel like you need to shit on it because there's so many games that aren't my thing but like i'm not gonna be like like, oh my god, you play da da da? I think that attitude is a little annoying. I love the idea of Stardew, but the pixelation doesn't work for me, which is why I like Coral Island. Art style is so important. And like me as an art, as a non-artist, I almost said I'm an artist, I'm literally not. Me as a non-artist, I guess I don't think about this that much, but when I do, it's like extremely profound to me. There are games that I will not play simply because I do not enjoy the art style. Pixel art games like are, is just not attractive to some people. The, like, like the retro style is not attractive to some people. For me, it's when things look like a buttery mobile game. That's why I felt like I wasn't that interested in Coral Island or like Disney Dreamlight Valley right away is because the art style kind of turns me off a little bit. Art and music and sound, it's so, so important to the gaming experience. And I feel like if you're not in that industry or something, like you don't think about it that much, but it is extremely important. I love the pixel art style. Like if you make a game in pixel art, chances are I'm gonna put that on my list. A majority of the Stardew community makes the game really unappealing for beginners. I don't know if I... I don't know. I, I guess I don't really know much about the Stardew Valley community. I can't imagine it's nearly as bad as the Sims 4 community or just like the Sims community in general because there's infighting about 3, 2, and 4 and all of it. It's something that I experience as a YouTuber who plays Stardew Valley. It's one of my favorite games and I put out videos about it even though I'm not like the most efficient player. I will get so many people in the comments telling me that I'm like stupid and that I did something wrong and da 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 da. It's just kind of like noise to me. But but with a lot of games, I think you should just let people play the game. They don't have to be like the most efficient ever. That's totally how I feel about like old school RuneScape. I've been playing that game for however many years of my life. And I literally feel like I'm the most inefficient player, but I'm still having fun. And you don't have to be like 100% super good at something to enjoy it, I guess. Gaming is not serious. Men specifically act like it's life or death if a woman plays COD or Animal Crossing. They get so pressed when it's literally just a bunch of pixels. That's always been so strange to me because like I, I just don't think that games necessarily have to be like categorized by like girl game or boy game but there's always gonna be like that really really toxic corner of the internet and you just kind of have to let it roll 
off your back. I have so much respect for streamers and YouTubers that are women that are femme presenting that play League of Legends, Valorant, everything, because there are so many people that are just like there to shit on you because you're a woman. Like just let people have fun. <laughs> I wish creators would make more Let's Play style videos instead of challenges. There has totally been a movement away from Let's Play style videos. Unless you are an established YouTuber or streamer, or if you just get like extremely, extremely lucky, a lot of the time Let's Plays are not going to like hit the same as like a single video. A lot of people will advise you against doing that. Things change, people want different styles of videos, but there's always going to be people that are creating the content that you're looking for. I would tell this person if they have no Let's Play YouTubers that they watch, definitely check out like Gab Smolders. Gab Smolders does a lot of like the Let's Play super long form type of videos. There is a, a teacup for everybody that's looking for their cup of tea. I don't know, that sounded dumb. Games should be completed at launch instead of being empty and releasing DLCs for men. Money. I don't really mind a DLC that much. I do mind when games are incomplete at launch. Like true that, that is the most fucking annoying thing ever in this whole world. I hate, I hate that it's possible to like update games now after release because it, it honestly, I think is just an excuse to like not have something finished before it needs to go out, which is never like the developer's fault. Okay. A lot of the times it is the mega corporation that's just trying to make money, but it, it is so, so annoying and it's not going away anytime soon. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other unpopular opinions, drop them down below. I'd love to see a little bit of discourse. Also, big thank you to everybody who submitted their unpopular opinion via my Instagram story. I'm sorry I had to cross your names out, but some of your takes were too spicy and I don't want you to get harassed. But thank you genuinely everybody for submitting. I hope you're having a great day and you continue to do so and I will see you in the next one.